The reservation is set for seven people. This individual will have a separate seat, please. That cheerful voice belonged to my mother-in-law, who always finds joy in teasing me. But today, everything changes. Armed with a secret, I've decided it's time to reveal all to our relatives. My name is Emily. I'm 28 and work as a chef. I met my husband, Chris, at a popular restaurant where I worked after culinary school. Chris manages his family's electronics store, a business passed down for three generations. After his father's passing last year, Chris became the third generation owner. I come from a simple family, but cooking runs in our blood. My parents and older brother are all chefs, and I've been cooking since childhood. With talent and hard work, I graduated top of my class. Cooking has always been my passion, but things changed after marrying Chris. Right after we tied the knot, I moved in with my mother-in-law. Chris had always lived at home, and with his father's recent passing, he felt it was necessary for me to be there to support his mother. I had imagined our married life eagerly, knowing that eventually, as the eldest son, we would reside with his mother. However, I hadn't anticipated it happening so soon. Maybe I should have expressed my concerns before marriage, but given the circumstances, I didn't want to seem difficult. Nonetheless, what's done is done. However, when we initially moved in together, my mother-in-law was incredibly kind. She would bring me cream puffs from my favorite bakery and insisted on taking care of most household chores, reasoning that I was working. She handled all the cooking, but I struggled with the taste. It seemed her dishes were always too intense for my palate. I later learned she hailed from the southern part of the country, where people supposedly prefer salty foods. However, not everyone from the South shares this taste preference. Some of my Southern co-workers actually preferred milder flavors. Regardless, my mother-in-law's cooking went beyond salty. Her stews were so dark, I couldn't discern the ingredients, and they tasted like concentrated barbecue sauce. She would insist I have more, claiming it complemented bread well. When I voiced my struggle with the saltiness, Chris would ask if she had toned it down to which she would reply with uncertainty, adjusting the seasoning based on my feedback. It left me feeling uneasy. We carried on like this for a while, but my work started to suffer. Constantly eating my mother-in-law's meals seemed to numb my taste buds, making it hard for me to discern flavors. Thankfully, the head chef always checked my dishes before service, sparing me any reprimands. Realizing this couldn't continue, I began waking up earlier than my mother-in-law especially for breakfast, which seemed to alleviate some of my struggles at work. Oddly, her demeanor toward me grew colder. She started ignoring my greetings and even criticized my cooking. Emily, this lacks flavor. You need to season it properly. Just because you're busy, what's your excuse? But mother-in-law, I've seasoned it as per the recipe. Please taste it. She did, only to respond. It's still bland. Can't you tell? Adding more would be unhealthy. What's wrong with enjoying good food? Don't let your skills go to waste. With that, she poured an excessive amount of soy sauce over my dish. I'm concerned about our health. I protested, but she brushed it off. I had a hunch about what triggered my mother-in-law's sudden change in behavior. It stemmed from an incident at my niece's birthday party hosted at our home. My husband has two sisters, both married and living separately. Despite our limited interactions, they've always been kind, even offering to intervene if I faced any issues with my mother-in-law. Their husbands are also pleasant individuals. During the party, which celebrated my older sister-in-law's daughter turning five, I assisted my mother-in-law in the kitchen. The dining table boasted an array of dishes, each clearly labeled with its creator. As the festivities commenced, my sister-in-law remarked, our daughter adores the omelette rice from Emily's restaurant. Having it here today is a treat. I actually make the omelettes at work. I responded, prompting praise from the birthday girl herself. The omelette lady's food is yummy. These exchanges didn't sit well with my mother-in-law. Desperate to redirect attention, she insisted, look, grandma's stew is also tasty. But her granddaughter rejected it, complaining, it hurts my mouth. While my sister's husbands politely sampled her cooking, it quickly requested more water, 
noting the excessive saltiness. My sister-in-law jokingly suggested I give her cooking lessons, which only fueled my mother-in-law's anger. She stormed out of the room, refusing to return. I regretted agreeing to cook for the party, but my mother-in-law had requested it, leaving me no choice. The tense atmosphere led to an early end to the celebration. While my sister-in-law's comment was meant in jest, criticism of one's cooking stings, it likely hurt my mother-in-law, who had prepared the food with hopes of delighting everyone. That night, I apologized to her, acknowledging any overstepping. Her response was cold, don't get too comfortable, you're just a freeloader. The next morning marked the beginning of relentless bullying from my mother-in-law. She would season the breakfast I prepared without even tasting it. If it didn't meet her standards, she disposed of it in front of me. Seeking solace, I turned to my husband, Chris. His response was dismissive, suggesting I was overreacting and should have obeyed his mother. He also started coming home later, using work as an excuse, even skipping his niece's birthday party. This behavior shattered any illusions I had about the kind of man he was, despite us being married for only six months. Our marriage was crumbling, and the thought of divorce crossed my mind. However, with just six months of marriage under our belt, I hesitated, knowing it would upset our parents. Then things took a turn for the worse. My mother-in-law slipped on the stairs, injuring her leg. Despite offers from my sister-in-law to assist, my mother-in-law insisted on my help, stating, you're technically the wife, so you should at least do this much. It's absurd to rely on my daughter. From then on, I was at my mother-in-law's beck and call, even for trivial tasks. She began contacting me during work hours, forcing me to request time off repeatedly. Although my co-workers assured me it was fine, I felt guilty and eventually resigned from my job. It seemed my mother-in-law had been waiting for this moment, mocking me, can't handle your prestigious job anymore, can you? How pathetic! Suddenly, day and night, my mother-in-law summoned me incessantly, leaving me no time to rest. Whenever I attempted to discuss things with Chris, he was increasingly absent, claiming to sleep at his office, though I doubted his words. My decision was made, but I couldn't leave without making a move, so I resolved to seek revenge. During breakfast one morning, I broached the topic. I want a divorce. They both looked shocked, dismissing my request with scorn. What nonsense. We've barely been married a year. You'll be the laughingstock. Accusing me of infidelity? Absurd. You're embarrassing us, Emily. You're way out of line. Despite their mockery, I stood firm. Chris is always absent. My mother-in-law only knows how to bully. Who'd want to endure that? I'm filing for divorce. My decision stands. My resolute stance alarmed them, prompting Chris to stutter an apology. We're sorry. I'll try to come home earlier. You can even stay at your parents' for a while but my mom's injured and I have work. Can't you stay until she recovers? Though he struggled to apologize, his sincerity was evident. I've been immature. I'm sorry. Can't you reconsider? I reluctantly agreed. Yet their smirks betrayed their true feelings, typical of a mother and son. Following that, the bullying ceased and Chris began returning home earlier. However, the tranquility was short-lived. Chris resumed his late returns and my mother-in-law's mistreatment resumed. Despite her leg failing to heal, she frequently ventured out, citing hospital visits. This behavior struck me as odd, leading me to uncover a shocking truth. Days later, my phone buzzed incessantly with calls from Chris and my mother-in-law. Chris's tone was heated when I answered. Where are you? How can you leave my mom like this? Unfazed, I responded, I'm at my parents' house. What's wrong? You said I could go. What are you saying? My mom's leg isn't better, right? In the background, I heard my mother-in-law causing a commotion. Regardless, I won't return. Please communicate through a lawyer, I declared before hanging up. Following that ordeal, I relished the peaceful moments at my parents' home. They pampered me with my favorite meals, and I reciprocated by cooking for them. When my mother praised my cooking as the best, tears welled up in my eyes. A few days later, I received an unexpected call from my dreaded mother-in-law. She apologized for her past behavior 
and extended an invitation to her upcoming birthday party, insisting I attend. The celebration would take place at a chick restaurant near the station, renowned for its new French-trained chef and authentic cuisine. Though not obligated, I saw it as an opportunity and accepted eagerly. My mother-in-law was thrilled, emphasizing the importance of my presence and promptly sharing the details. On the day of the birthday party the following week, Chris and my mother-in-law awaited me at the restaurant entrance. As I approached, Chris wore a smirk, and my heart sank. The gathering mirrored the previous one. Two sets of sister-in-laws with their husbands and a little girl, alongside my mother-in-law, husband, and myself, totaling eight. The impending divorce remained a secret, with instructions to disclose it after the meal. Amidst the anticipation, the sister-in-laws and their spouses arrived. Hamily, it's been too long. You look stunning as always, they greeted warmly. With everyone present, we proceeded into the restaurant. However, our party of eight seemed to puzzle the waiter. Is the reservation for seven people? We're eight, he questioned. Before I could respond, my mother-in-law interjected loudly, the reservation is indeed for seven. We prefer this person to be seated separately, please, pointing at me as she spoke. As I was pushed forward, confusion painted the faces of the sister-in-laws and their husbands, while Chris and my mother-in-law exchanged smirks. Ha, huh, so this was their plan. How amusing. Emily has a surprise, doesn't she? My mother-in-law declared, revealing the supposed surprise at her own birthday party, much to my bewilderment. Well, if my mother-in-law enjoys surprises, then I'll gladly provide one. Emily, is it true? The sisters-in-law appeared concerned, prompting my response, yes, indeed. I had hoped to keep it under wraps, but my mother-in-law caught wind of it. Pardon me, is there an available seat? I inquired of the waiter, who kindly led me to a seat out of sight from my in-laws, a welcome relief. While they enjoyed their meal, including a specially prepared kid's meal for one of the sister's in-law's daughters, I remained out of their view. The atmosphere seemed pleasant. The young girl exclaimed joyfully, Wow, this tastes just like my sister's omelet. Her sisters echoed similar sentiments praising the food's deliciousness. My mother-in-law beamed with pride, boasting, you see? Since the chef changed, the flavors have vastly improved. Wait until you try the meat dishes after this, she boasted with my husband nodding in agreement. Then came the moment my mother-in-law had eagerly awaited, the arrival of the meat dish she had boasted about. A tantalizing plate was placed in front of my sister-in-law and her husband. However, as minutes passed, no food arrived for my mother-in-law and husband. Growing impatient, they beckoned the waiter, demanding answers. What's the holdup? My mother-in-law's voice boomed, the loudness seeming out of place in the elegant restaurant, prompting grimaces from nearby patrons. The chef himself will serve your dishes. Please be patient, the waiter calmly responded, to which my mother-in-law retorted, Oh, really? Is it because we're regulars? Despite her tone, she didn't appear entirely displeased. Apologies for the delay, they muttered, clearly expecting a waiter, but were met with shock when they saw who brought their dishes. Their eyes widened in disbelief as they gazed upon me, donning a chef's coat. What? Emily, what's going on? Ah, so this is what a surprise feels like. Emily, you never fail to surprise us. Despite the sisters-in-law's amazement, my husband and mother-in-law wore expressions that clearly said, this isn't what we had planned. Ignoring their reactions, I proceeded to serve the dishes without a care in the world. I've prepared this dish especially tailored to your tastes. I announced as I placed a peculiar black lump smother in rich soy sauce in front of my mother-in-law. With a flourish, I poured even more soy sauce onto it. She stood frozen, clearly taken aback, and for our special guest, I continued, presenting a plate adorned with an assortment of batteries, ranging from double A to D, to add an extra kick. Please help yourself to some soy sauce. I added, setting a whole bottle in front of my husband. After all, he's always buzzing about work. I quipped, arranging the batteries for my electrician husband, even selecting the priciest ones available at other electronic stores. I anticipate some gratitude for my efforts. My nieces erupted into laughter at the sight. 
My sister-in-law and her husband wore expressions suggesting, isn't this a bit over the top? Meanwhile, my mother-in-law and husband flushed red with embarrassment, bellowing, you're making a mockery of us and this establishment. Get the manager. As my husband made the demand, the manager emerged, calmly stating, that would be me. What on earth were you thinking? We're the customers here. We'll take legal action. They threatened, to which the manager calmly responded, is that so? Well, in that case, we'll be pursuing legal action against you two for disrupting our business. Their response? A puzzle, huh? It became apparent that my in-laws were frequent patrons of the restaurant, often exhibiting arrogance towards the staff. They had a reputation for nitpicking, never considering the inconvenience they caused other customers. Their troublesome behavior was well known. We've tolerated it because you're family, but it seems it's time to put some distance between us. Right, Emily? Absolutely, big brother. Upon hearing this revelation, my in-laws turned their surprised gazes towards us. You see, this restaurant has been managed by my brother for quite some time now. He resides in France and couldn't make it back for our wedding due to his busy schedule. Despite sending his congratulations, my mother-in-law and my husband, Bob, had never met him. However, my brother had seen family photos and recognized both of them, I explained. I deeply regret not being able to attend your wedding. I attempted to reach out several times, but you always seem to have company, I continued, watching as their faces paled. The conversation grew tense. My sisters-in-law urged their husbands to leave first, then proposed, shall we delve into this further? Though they smiled, their eyes betrayed a seriousness that sent a chill down my spine. It's merely business, you know. The old timers on Main Street, they prefer these modern spots these days. Chris interjected. As he spoke, a waiter approached and handed him an earring, remarking, you left this behind last time. Dining with men who wear earrings, quite suspicious, isn't it? My sister-in-law commented with a smirk. Unable to contain my laughter, I responded, no, dear sister-in-law, this man has been having an affair with a woman who works at a florist near his shop. Chris's face drained of color as he glanced at me, silently questioning how I knew. Little did he know, I had hired a private investigator some time ago. My intuition had proven correct. Chris had been meeting the woman almost daily after work. This restaurant appeared to be their favorite haunt, as they visited nearly every week. The evidence, including photos of their rendezvous at a hotel, was abundant. I'm serious about her. Marrying you was a mistake. I'm ready for a divorce, Chris declared, his stance on divorce suddenly shifting. That works for me. I've been wanting a divorce too. I replied, seizing the opportunity. But I'll be seeking alimony, so be prepared to pay up. I just landed a major contract, I added. I'll happily comply, he chuckled. Good to hear. Now, as for you, mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, who had remained silent until then visibly trembled. Though not as frequent a patron as Chris, she too had her own routine here but I'm already a widow, she protested. That's irrelevant, I countered. Upon hearing her confession, I felt compelled to reveal another piece of information. I had the private investigator look into you as well, mother-in-law. It seems your relationship with your partner has been ongoing for about five years. However, didn't father-in-law pass away just last year? My sisters-in-law shot their mother a glare of anger. No surprises there. The two of them were always closer to our esteemed father than to our mother. Discovering the truth, they were understandably furious. I too was taken aback by the level of detail the investigator had uncovered about my mother-in-law. It was revealed that my father-in-law had also hired the same investigator. You've been deceiving us about dad all this time. And Chris, you're cheating on Emily. Have you both lost your minds? The sisters-in-law's anger showed no signs of abating. Recognizing that our presence was disturbing other patrons, we agreed to disperse for the day and reconvene at the in-law's house on another occasion. On that day, I bid farewell to my brother and the staff with spirited high fives. A few days later, in the presence of my two sisters-in-law, the divorce papers were filled out. My husband, showing no remorse,
grumbled phrases like, well, just make sure you don't regret it, all right? Despite my limited mobility, I ended up with such a troublesome wife. Exhausted by his endless complaints, I snapped, mind your step, mother-in-law. She jolted, responding with a puzzled, what? It was evident her leg had fully healed. Despite this, she continued to feign discomfort, solely to torment me. Her spiteful behavior confirmed her status as nothing more than a stranger to me. Thus, my brief marital journey came to an end in less than a year, and I had no regrets. Afterward, alimony payments for both my ex-husband and his mistress were deposited into my account simultaneously. While it seemed my ex-husband covered his mistress's portion too, that detail was inconsequential. Following the divorce, despite plunging into debt to fulfill his alimony obligations, my ex-husband was swiftly dumped by his newfound partner. Later, I discovered from my sister-in-law that the woman was notorious in her hometown as a homewrecker. Despite my ex-husband boasting about securing a major contract, it transpired that the restaurant was filled mostly with regular customers on the day we visited. As we exited the restaurant, following an encounter with the complaining couple, applause erupted in our wake. My brother confided in me, saying, I heard from our other sibling that the reservation was only for seven people, so I assumed there wasn't room for me anyway, which is why I went along with the plan. As expected, they are now prohibited from ever setting foot in the restaurant again. News of their misconduct quickly spread, resulting in the loss of their significant contract. It's a fitting consequence, I suppose. Their electronic store seemed to thrive on trust, but their future success is now uncertain. As for my mother-in-law, she too suffered repercussions. Not only was she abandoned by her partner, but her poor health led to a diagnosis revealing that her long-term dietary habits were to blame. Despite treatment, her body will never fully recover. It seems like a fitting consequence for her actions as well. As for me, I've returned to my job at the familiar Western-style restaurant. Despite the tumultuous events, my colleagues warmly embraced me back into the fold. Welcome back, omelette lady. They greeted me with affection. My sisters-in-law remain loyal patrons of the restaurant. They severed ties with their mother and brother following the incident. They couldn't overlook the betrayal towards me, someone they had treated like a younger sister, and the deceit towards their late father. Their resolve to maintain this distance remains steadfast. Despite the challenges, my true joy lies in the kitchen. Cooking brings me unparalleled happiness, and in this moment, I find myself at my happiest.